everybody. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Remarkable Spirit, Memories of a Medium. My name is Gabrielle Gardner and I am a medium. That means that I see, feel, and hear the souls of those who are no longer residing in a physical body. They are in the non-physical, or in more traditional terms, they have died. Dying as I have come to know it most definitely is not the end. In fact, it is just the beginning, the beginning of a new chapter, a new form of existence, but it really isn't anything new at all. It is an existence that has been around since the beginning of everything and the beginning of all, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me explain. Over the course of these shows, I will be sharing some of the most remarkable experiences I have had with spirit and I am eternally grateful that I now get to share these remarkable stories with you. As I share these stories, I will be going directly off the notes that are in my journal, which is the way I keep the records of my work with spirit. So we will be hearing from that soon. I would like to share a little bit more about mediums and what we do. So mediums connect to spirit in many different ways. I always connect to spirit through my guides and they show me signs and symbols and to have a conversation with someone in spirit, my guides connect to their guides and that is just the way that I do it, but there's many other ways. My guides have shown me that in addition to connecting people to their loved ones in spirit during readings, it is also one of my roles during this lifetime to assist souls who end up in a place that is in between our place and in between their place. I very creatively named this space the in-between place. Now many, many, many of the souls that I connect with end up in a place that is eternal joy, happiness, bliss, and love, where they are always connected to their family and their friends, and they feel ever presently surrounded by a warm, peaceful, loving light. However, my guides have shown me that there is another place where souls sometimes temporarily stay, and they can end up in this space for many, many different reasons, Sometimes they're not even aware that they have arrived there. It could be due to a traumatic passing and they temporarily have to take some time to process their feelings and emotions. But more often than not, it is their own inability to release their trauma and their soul pain. And in this state of trauma, it is challenging for them to reach up to the guides or have the guides reach down to them. And so they end up in this in-between space for just a short amount of time. It is important for you to understand that when souls are in this in-between space, they are absolutely not being held by any outside force. It is their own mind, their own energy, their own thoughts that keep them in this place just for a short while. And as they move out of this place, they again always infinitely return to a place of love and light with their loved ones in spirit. Today, I would like to take a few moments to share one of these remarkable stories of spirit with you about a man that I met who is temporarily staying in this space in the in-between place. So to share this story, I'll be reading directly from my journal at times, and then I will be adding in bits about the man that I met. So last spring, I was on the way home from a funeral with my family. My mom was driving and my grandpa was in the front seat. My aunt and I were in the back seat and it was a beautiful sunny day here in Oregon. We were driving through Washington Park when suddenly I began to feel emotions that were not my own. This is often the first thing guides and spirit will share with me. And I know that it's not my own because it's very out of place from what I'm experiencing in that time. So while I was coming home from the funeral, I simply you know, felt tired, but then I was overwhelmed by anger and I felt like the energy of having a temper. And I also felt very, very tired, very tired um, suddenly. And so that is a guide's way of showing me that I'm now being introduced to the energy of another soul. But that's all I got on our way home in the car ride. 
So I got home later that night after attending the funeral with my family, and I was sitting at home watching TV with my mom when suddenly I began to feel those energetic emotions again. I knew they were not mine, they were not matching what I was doing in that present moment. I felt anger, I felt like I had a temper, and then it felt like I had sadness and I was feeling remorse. And so I asked my guides where those feelings were coming from, and they began to show me the energy of a man. They showed me his image, as it was like a shadow within a light, and so I saw his height, and then it came, became clearer as he stepped forward. And I saw that he was in his 60s, this is how he presented to me, and he had gray scruffy hair and a five o'clock shadow and dark green shirt, and he just looked overwhelmingly unhappy. But that was all I got again that night. This is how it happens with spirit and these kind of longer episodes with them where I get little tidbits of information and it comes in over the course of days or weeks. So that was all I got from him that night. For the sake of privacy, I have changed the man's name from the name that my guides gave me. And from this point on, I will be calling him John. The next afternoon, while I was in the kitchen making my second pot of coffee for the day, I felt his energy enter into our kitchen. Again, it was the anger and I saw his gray hair. I knew exactly who I was talking to. And so I decided to be very straightforward since his energy was angry. And I simply asked him if he could see his guides. Because sometimes when a soul is in this in-between place, they aren't aware of their guides and they get caught up in their own emotions to where they can't see others in spirit who are trying to assist them. But when I asked John this question, if he could see his guides, he very honestly said, F off. <laughs> and he did not use the abbreviation. He told me to F off and then he was gone. So John's lack of an answer gave me a lot of information though, because that meant that he very clearly could see his guides and he was choosing not to follow them to the place of light. The next evening, I was again watching TV late at night and I felt John come in and he was very angry and I could tell that everything that was going on was orchestrated by his guides. So at this point in the process, he wasn't exactly a willing participant. People always need to be willing in their process of crossing and moving fully into the realm of spirit. But early on when they're working on processing, processing their emotions, sometimes the guides need to help them with that first step. So he stepped forward and I again decided to be blunt and I asked him, why are you not moving? Why are you not crossing? And he again told me to F off. And I said, that's not good enough. I need you to tell me what I can do to help you, what the guides can do to help you. And it was at that point that I said, I don't have much control over this either, but it's gonna be easier for the both of us if you can just tell me why you are here. And please tell me why you don't just follow them to where you are meant to be. And he very quickly and angrily said, because that's not a place for me. I don't belong there. And then he was gone. And this seemed like a very strange answer for me of I don't belong there. Um, I had never heard another soul tell me this when, when we were talking about crossing into light. And so I thought about it. And as I was going to sleep that night, I asked my guides what this answer meant. And when I asked what he had meant by saying I don't belong there, my head began to be filled with images of war and of violence. And that's when I knew that he was a veteran. And I knew that he had served in the military many years ago. And so at that point, I still didn't know what the connection was, but I knew that this was a significant part of why he wasn't crossing into light. So the next afternoon, when I had this insight the previous night that allowed me to see more of John's background and see what he had done while in body, what he did in this life, I was able to have more of an open conversation with him and I better understood where he was coming from. And the guides orchestrated this conversation again as they always do. And so I was able to connect with him again in the kitchen. He liked to hang out in the kitchen. And I asked him, why are you not crossing into light? And his response was, again, because I do not deserve this. I do not deserve to move forward. I said, what do you mean? And he said, after what I did, I don't deserve to go anywhere better. And he angrily said this, again, my, my head was filled with images, but this time it was filled with images of fire and of a small house that was hut-like. And then I began to hear children crying and a woman screaming. 
And at that same time as I received those images, I got what I call a spiritual download, which is where they just share a lot of information in big chunk. And I was able to understand what had happened. By understanding that John had taken the life of a woman and her children while serving in war and that he, he was a Vietnam veteran, I now understood that we would need to help him process this time in this series of events while he had been in body so that he could now fully return to the non-physical. So again, this was a very unique case with John. Sometimes the souls who are in the non-physical and they're in this in-between space, they aren't able to connect to their loved ones and they aren't able to connect to guides. John very much could see all of them and he still was choosing to not move forward because he felt he didn't deserve to move on to a better place. In a sense, his, he was creating his own place of self-punishment. He wasn't being damned to hell. He wasn't caught by any outside force. It was simply his own emotions that were blocking his way to move forward. That night, as I was falling asleep, again, my head was filled with the images of John's memories. And it was then that his guides connected with my guides and shared that while he was still in body, John had experienced extreme PTSD for over 40 years when he returned home from the war. Essentially, his soul had been shattered or fractured by what he was forced to do during wartime and he was never able to fully move past that and when he passed he carried that energy with him and so it was now the opportunity of the guides to help him release that in a sort of final energetic shift that he could he could move through so that he could move to a place of light as I learned more about John's experience with PTSD, I asked the guides what could be done to help him release this feeling and release these memories and these images that had haunted him for decades. And they said that someone that he knew would be able to assist him in releasing these feelings. And so I began to thought, think about that. And I thought of maybe his mother or his brother, but I realized that he already could see them and he wasn't willing to talk to them about it. And he wasn't willing to, willing to allow their energy to help him release these memories. So I wasn't really sure where to go from there. I just knew that it was gonna be connecting to somebody else that he knew. The next afternoon while making breakfast, I began to hear string music. I heard string music playing in my head. I knew it wasn't in the house. I could hear it coming from Spirit and I knew I didn't recognize it. I'd never heard anything like it before. And so I asked Spirit, I asked my guides what it was. And as I asked what music I was hearing, I began to see images of Vietnam. And I began to see images from John's memory in time and war again. And that's when I realized that what I was hearing was traditional Vietnamese music. And as I recognized and acknowledged the beauty of the music, which is something that Spirit always asks us to do when we receive signs from them, I was shown the image of a woman. And I, re I realized that this was the woman that John had killed while he was in war. And that's when I realized that this woman was going to be the one to help John move into light. And I absolutely did not understand this at the time. So, the guides showed me that the woman that John had killed would be, quite literally as I was hearing instrumental music, instrumental in helping John move to a place of light. And it didn't make sense to me why this woman would be the one to want to do that or to participate in that, but sometimes you just have to roll with spirit. And so they showed me that what needed to be done is that I would create a sacred grid to honor this woman in her life and the lives of her family members. So a sacred grid is something that I have been shown how to make, and many other mediums know this as well, um, that the guides help us align the energy of the earth 
with the energy of the spirit realm. It's nothing like a seance or using a Ouija board. What it does is it creates a very peaceful, energetic space where souls in the non-physical can join souls in the physical for a celebration and an honoring and a very honest, straightforward conversation. Um, so my guide showed me that this is what I would need to do to connect with this woman that John had um, killed. And from this point on, again, for the sake of privacy, I will not be using her real name. I will be calling her Lynn. <clears throat> I spent the next afternoon gathering all of the items I would need to make this healing grid and to hold the ceremony for Lynn and John. As I laid out the flowers and the stones for this woman who had been killed and her family, I began to feel her coming closer. I thanked her for stepping in, and as her guides connected to my guides, I began to more clearly hear her words. She shared the story of her passing. She had easily crossed along with her family years ago at the time of her passing, and she was very much aware of the man who had taken her life and the lives of her children. She shared how angry she was but as she shared her story, I felt her energy remain light, and I didn't understand this at all at the time. She was furious with him, and she made this very clear. She told me she was very, very angry at him, but she said that she absolutely did not believe that John was meant to sit in his self-made place of suffering, and she thought that he did not deserve to stay in this in-between space. I asked her if she would help me help John. <laughs> and I remember that she took a long pause and then she just closed her eyes and she nodded at me and then she walked away and I just saw her kind of fade away. <clears throat> so after that conversation with Lynn, this is the hard part of spirit to explain, but I felt things happening. I felt big shifts taking place. It was like dominoes being lined up and it just, in the spirit realm, I could feel that something big was about to happen. <clears throat> My guide showed me that it would be Lynn who would be running the ceremony to help John cross into light. Excuse me. So five days later, with the materials gathered, I woke up and my guides told me that it would be time. It would be time to help John move from his place in the in-between space <clears throat> to the place of the eternal love he was meant to know. So what was about to take place was a powerful healing ceremony for John, a Vietnam veteran who had suffered from extreme PTSD for 40 years of his life and then carried some of these emotions with him when he crossed into spirit. And as he now sat in this in-between space, it was the woman whose life he had taken while, during, while in war that was going to help him move into this place of light. John felt unworthy of peace and unworthy of love, and this was the only thing blocking him from moving fully into spirit, into the realm where he would know eternal love. For decades, he had been weighed down by regret and guilt and heart pain, and now Lynn was gonna help him release that. So to begin the ceremony, I poured some brandy, which was his choice, and I draped flowers over a military rucksack, and I turned on Creedence Clearwater Revival. As I laid out the items, I felt a very powerful energy enter the room, and again it was Lynn, the loving soul of the woman who had lost her life in war, but in that moment she was so much more than that. She was a very powerful energetic force that was guiding a healing ceremony for the man who had taken her life. I was moved to tears when I saw her step in to help John. This level of forgiveness and release was an unparalleled act of kindness and I had never seen anything like it before. While she was still very angry with him and his choices, she told me that she did not believe he needed to remain in the place he had chosen to be. She knew there was a better place for him and she would help him move to that place. So with our guides, John and I sat down with our brandy and our chocolate chip cookies, which is his first indulgence in decades, and he began to tell me his story.
And he told me of his regrets and of his shame and some of the pain that he experienced. And all I had to do was listen and it was the work of the guides who removed the pain from his heart as he shared it through his words. We began the process of helping him shed his self-contempt so that he could raise his vibration to begin his walk with spirit. This process was led by our guides. I must repeat that because they are the ones who carry out these healing ceremonies. As he processed his pains and released the burden of memories and nightmares and shame, he was finally ready to step forward. He wholeheartedly opposed any of my choices of spiritual music that I usually use during crossing ceremonies, and he chose to cross into light listening to Up Around the Bend by Creedence Clearwater Revival. So just before he crossed, John stood up from his place next to me, and Lynn stepped forward. And for the first time, he looked her in the eye, and she looked at him, and they just stared at each other for a very long moment. <clears throat> and then she simply closed her eyes and nodded at him. And then she turned and left. And I saw John's shoulder shake with a sob. And I knew that that was a sob of relief because he had finally gotten what he needed. And so he looked back at me one more time and looked at the guides standing all around us. And then he just took that step forward into the light and he was gone. And that was it. John had released that pain with the help of Lynn. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> so this unparalleled act of kindness and of forgiveness of Lynn, of forgiving John, the man who had taken her life, was one of the most beautiful things I've ever witnessed. It's been a little over a year since that happened, since that event took place, and I'm still moved to tears when I think of what Lynn did for John. <clears throat> and this is just one of the many remarkable experiences I've had with spirit. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I would like to continue to honor both of their lives by sharing their story with you today. So thank you for the time, taking the time to listen to John and Lynn's story. And I would like it if you could carry it with you, carry it out of your day and into your life and know that no act prevents you from the opportunity of finding peace. No pain is too great to be heal healed. And forgiveness is one of the most powerful energetic forces in all of existence. Carry not just this story, but the energy of John and Lynn, a soldier who had experienced tremendous pain in his own way, and Lynn who had experienced her own pain. These were two souls that were haunted by their past, a soldier haunted by his actions, and a woman who knew the power of love. She knew what her love could do, and they became together two souls who were able to step into the eternal light and love by seeing each other as human beings who deserved forgiveness, who made mistakes, and who were capable of a great, great love. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this remarkable story of spirit. As always, I am humbled and I am honored to be able to do this work with spirit, and I am eternally grateful to the guides and the angels and the source from which we came. Please join me again next time for another remarkable story from Spirit. If you or somebody you know are experiencing PTSD or are having thoughts of suicide, please reach out to somebody you know. Somebody is always willing to listen and you can always heal any pain. This is not the end. This is not the end of you. You are so much bigger than what you are feeling in this moment. So please reach out. There is always love. You deserve love. You will always find unconditional love.